Okay. Uh, so welcome to CP381 additional lectures. So in this lecture, I'm going to discuss Fourier series of discrete time periodic signals. Fourier series of discrete time periodic signal. Okay. So in this case, first we represent periodic signal as a combination of complex exponentials and then use eigen property of LTI system to find the response. Series of discrete time. Okay, so in this case, first we uh, represent periodic signal as a combination of. Exponential and use the icon function property of LTI systems to find the response and the response okay and so in this case um, if you recall um, um, discrete time signal is periodic if there is a positive, if there is a positive integer and such that x of n plus k by k multiplied by n um, equal to x of k n. Uh, for any integer k. And remember that the small n is also integer, which is an indices for your discrete time uh, signal samples. And so, according to the eigenfunction, property of the discrete um, discrete or discrete time LTI system I would say discrete time LTI system whenever so when there is a um, eigen, so whenever there is a discrete time LTI system, and if it is has an eigen function property, then which is what is whenever the input to such systems is a complex exponentials. So complex exponentials, exponentials. A e to the power j omega zero n plus theta, where omega zero is is your fundamental frequency. Okay, then the responding 
responding output in the steady state is y of m equal to a e to the power j omega 0 m plus theta multiplied by frequency response e to the power j uh, e to the power j uh, omega 0 m okay so here um where like so where h of e j omega zero is the frequency response response of the system at the input frequency omega zero okay so that's it and so in this case and so in this case um hence if we are able to express the input signals as a linear combination of a complex exponentials then complex exponentials then by the principle of superposition we have a linear combination of responses to each exponentials as well. So we have a linear combination of the responses to each exponentials. Okay, so if x of n is equal to summation, k is in the a, a k e to the power j omega k n, okay, then this will lead to y of n equal to summation k index a k e to the power j omega k n h e to the power j omega k, okay. And this property is valid even if the frequency component even if the frequency components of the input of the input are, are monically related or not okay but remember that x in is in this case periodic but remember x in is periodic okay and so so uh, from the Fourier series discussion, this we know that if x of t is a periodic with fundamental period, if a continuous function f of x of t is is periodic. with fundamental free fundamental time period fundamental time period t0 then x of t can be written as sum of 
k in minus infinity to infinity x of k e to the power j 2 pi k t divided by t zero okay so that's what we have and and if we sample x of t using the sample period t of s equal to t zero n okay t of zero n and where the sampling frequency equal to n omega zero omega zero is your fundamental frequency in the continuous domain uh, thus uh, satisfying Nyquist sampling criteria okay um, and n is your positive integer n is your positive integer okay then x of n t s equal to x now it becomes a discrete signal equal to summation infinity k equal to minus infinity uh, Fourier coefficient capital X k e to the power j 2 pi k n t s divided by t zero okay and then we are gonna plug in uh, this thing here and equal to summation infinity k equal to minus infinity x of k e to the power j 2 pi k small n by capital n okay so this we have and so this this summation okay repeats between 0 to 2 pi okay between uh, repeats okay sorry uh, repeats um, okay repeats the frequencies between 0 to 2 pi because e to the power g 2 pi k n by n that is your period okay and and so to avoid repetition we can assume that k equal to m plus r n right and so this is basically like the what uh, we are thinking about is a periodic signal right so it's similar to this so we had n plus small k by capital n so it's a similar form so k plus r n zero okay and r will is zero plus minus one plus minus two dot 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 because that's what is being periodic okay and so which means that that is we divide the infinite support of k into m infinite support of uh, of sorry we divide the infinite support into into uh, we divide infinite number of sorry infinite support into m infinite number of finite segments of length n okay so that's what we are doing. We are doing an infinite support into finite, infinite number of finite support or a finite segment, which will have a length n. Then x of 
then in this case x of m t s which can also be written as x bracket n equal to summation n minus one m equal to 0, summation infinity r equal to minus infinity, and then x m plus r n e to the power j 2 pi m plus r n by n by n, and which in this case, you can assume that this is your, this is in this case, x of m, okay, it's repeating. Um, so x of m, and this is also periodic. So we could write this as summation n minus one, m equal to zero, into the power j two pi m n by n. Okay, so this is another kind of a Fourier series representation. So this representation is in terms of complex exponentials with frequencies 2 pi m divided by m, m equal to 0, 1 dot dot n minus 1 from 0 to 2 pi n minus n minus 1 divided by m. Okay, so now we have this. Then, uh, if we consider um, uh, now next, get okay, we have this. Uh, okay. So if if we have an orthogonal basis function, y a n so let's see, in this case, e to the power j 2 pi k n divided by n, n and k equal to zero, these, these are integers, okay? Then we find out that phi k plus l, um, phi k plus l n comma n is your, is your e to the power j 2 pi k plus l k plus l n multiplied by n divided by m e to the power j 2 pi k n divided by m j 2 pi l n e to the power j 2 pi k n Okay, so is equal to one, and we find out that they are orthogonal over the support of n and summation n minus one n equal to zero phi a comma n phi star. L comma n equal to summation n minus one n equal to zero e to the power j. So this is star is your complex conjugate. That's what it means here. So so two pi n k n e to the power j two pi n l small n then star which is complex conjugate which will be n if k if k minus l equal to zero so this complex conjugate if you will remove 
Then in this case, it can be written as n minus one, n equal to zero, e to the power j, two pi, uh, n, and then n, k minus l. Okay. So this whole thing will become, if you remove the complex conjugate, then e to the power minus j, two pi, n, small l, multiplied by n. Okay, and zero, if k minus l is not equal to zero. Okay. So we have this. Then um, to normalize, we divide uh, um, divide um, by square root. So summation n minus one n equal to zero five k n square root n by star square root n equal to summation sum n minus 1 to 0 e to the power j 2 by n k minus n equal to 1 minus e to the power j 2 by n multiplied by k minus n divided by e to the power minus j to pi n k minus l. Okay, so what it, what this did was that it used geometric progressions formula for, but this is a finite geometric progression. So in this case, one minus a r to the power n divided by one minus r. I think this is your geometric progression formula. So one minus, so this is S equal to one minus A R. Okay, so one minus in this, so S, um, A is your first term. Uh, I think, no, I think, oh, uh, wait a minute. So I think this would be, uh, this would be like this. S equal to A one minus R to the power N divided by R minus, sorry. Uh, one minus R. Or you could also write down this as, and both are correct, okay? So in this case, both are correct. It's going to be where r is not equal to one, otherwise you know it can be zero. Okay. So this is what we have, and first term will be a equal to one, and r will be your e to the power j to pi capital N multiplied by k minus L. Okay. And <clears throat> um so in this case. We find out that the basis function are orthogonal. Okay, so in um, so, okay. so in summary, the Fourier series representation of a periodic signal x of n, small x of n of fundamental period n is small x n equal to some k0 plus minus 1 k equal to k0 where k0 is any integer x to the power k e to the power j 2 pi capital n small x. Okay. okay, and where, where, um, where Fourier coefficient x of k are obtained by capital x k. 
So we show n equal to n0, and n0 plus n minus 1, small n, a to the power minus 3 to 5. Okay, so you just have to do just for the one period and you can start from anywhere. Okay. And omega zero equal to two pi pi n radian n radian, uh, which is which is the fundamental frequency in zero in zero. Uh, arbitrary integer values okay and so the final comment here is that the the Fourier series coefficients x a as a function of frequency 2 pi k by n, which is your omega k, omega 0 k, are periodic of fundamental period and okay so that's what we have the next we are going to discuss connection with z transform okay so in fourier series for continuous functions continuous signals we saw that there was a connections with Laplace transform for a periodic signal. And so in case of the discrete uh, time, discrete time signals, we have the connections with G transform. And so similar to the Laplace transform, we can calculate Uh, Fourier series of a periodic discrete time signal by Z transform. Okay, so let's say that we have this. Uh, periodic signal okay so let's assume that this looks like this um, okay and then after that it repeats okay so in this case you see this is my uh, fundamental period okay and let's say it's equal to size of n so we can write the mathematical representation just for just one signal as as um, as x of n multiplied by u of n minus u of n minus n okay so u of n minus u n minus one basically will be valid only for one period and rest of them at rest of the places it will be zero and so and so uh, we can write down as z of z transform x of n um a small x of x1 of n equal to summation n minus one n equal to zero x 
n z to the power minus m, right? We can write like this. Um, and ROC in this case, ROC is the whole z plane except z equal to zero or origin, okay? So in this case, except z equal to zero or origin and and so thus the Fourier series coefficients of x of n are x of k equal to one by m summation x of n e to the power minus j 2 pi n k n equal to 1 by n z transform x of x1 of n z equal to e to the power j 2 pi capital n small n. Okay, so that is what we have. And so you can use this property to determine any of the Fourier series coefficients for a periodic signal, okay, given your fundamental period n or your fundamental frequency omega zero, okay. Um, so now next, uh, next we have discrete time Fourier transform of a periodic signal. So in this case, uh, we have TTFT of a periodic signal. So what we discussed so far was for our periodic signal. And so usually we have X of N equal to summation N minus one K zero, uh, X of K e to the power J two pi N K by N. Okay. Um, so, a discrete time Fourier transform of a periodic signal. So, okay. So what we discussed so far was that the connections with Z transform for your, for your, uh, for your discrete time periodic signals. Okay. And, but we can also, um, write down the discrete time Fourier transform of periodic signals like regularly or normally, how we would be doing it is that, um, so generally discrete, if we assume, if we assume that, um, if, if we think about the frequency time duality, then in that case, we can use that method. So normally if we have the function as e to the power j, Omega, which is the Fourier transform, discrete time Fourier transform of a signal X of N may not be periodic, but right now, but if, then we usually take the frequency, uh, then the Fourier transform of X of N, which is basically summation K X of K e to the power J two pi N K divided by N, okay? That's what we usually usually have. And so summation comes out, then Fourier transforms go inside X of K e to the power J two pi N K divided by N. Okay. So now we can apply frequency uh, time duality and the Fourier transform table to summation K two pi X of K delta mega minus two pi small k divided by n minus pi mega. Okay, so this is what we have, the discrete time Fourier transform of a periodic signal. So we saw that there are uh, different ways we could do that. So this is 
So this is your discrete time Fourier transform. And earlier, this was your Fourier series for a periodic signal, periodic discrete, discrete signal. So these two are different things. So this was your Fourier series for discrete time periodic signals. And this one is discrete time Fourier transform of a periodic signal. So I hope these two are clear. Okay, um, that's all. And thank you.